Hey food lovers, thanks for joining me on Neri's Kitchen. Today we are going to make some sugar-free peanut butter cookies. Using everyday ingredients and with just a few minutes to prepare, you have a delicious treat that is lower in carbs and definitely hits the spot. This recipe is adaptable. You can keep it simple or load it with your favorite toppings. And if you have a sweet tooth like me, save this recipe and let's get baking. All right, so we are starting off with some nut butter. I am using some natural peanut butter, but uh, notice that I had it upside down. And the reason why you want to store your peanut butter upside down is because natural peanut butter, it has the oils. It's, it seems to sit on top, right? And we don't like that, it just makes such a big mess. So I like to actually put it upside down and that way there is no air at the bottom of the, the jar and so then you don't have that oil sitting up. So that's just a little tip for you guys. Store your natural peanut butters upside down. So we are using about a cup of natural peanut butter. Of course you can use any nut butter you'd like. You can use almond butter or cashew butter but I have some natural peanut butter on hand. So let's use that. And look how soft it is, right? You don't have, it's not very hard as you can tell. So we'll just use about a cup of that. Lid on, once again, upside down. Okay, so let's put that into a large bowl. And then um, I, we're also using one egg. With baking, I actually like to keep my eggs at room temperature. For some reason, you're supposed to use room temperature eggs I'm not too sure why, but I think it helps with the baking process. Baking is a science. Everything has to be exact, is what I've learned. And uh, next, we're going to use some um, baking powder because we want our cookies to have, to kind of poof up a little bit, right? So baking powder is your friend. We are using half a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, and then also a pinch of cinnamon, just adds a little bit of flavor, not too much, but I would say maybe like a couple sprinkles or a quarter teaspoon. So I'm just gonna eyeball this again. There we go. And then our last ingredient, I'm using um, a blend of monk fruit and granulated stevia. I'm using three quarters of a cup. Of course, you can use xylitol if you'd like. Um, you can use some Splenda, uh, any, any natural sugar you, you would like. If you want to use coconut sugar, that works as well. If you want to use regular sugar, you can, but it will increase your carb intake. So I'm just gonna add it like that. And now let's mix this thing. So I like these cookies because I only use four ingredients, right? Four ingredients, that's it. And these are ingredients that you probably have on hand already. Just, this is the hard part, is mixing this batter. <laughs> but notice it kind of forms right away, already into a batter. So that's why I like this. You can get the kids involved also. You really can't make a mistake on this. And look at that, it's already into a batter. So I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Now you just need your cookie sheet. So I'll just grab one right now. So here's my cookie sheet. And then you want to also put a layer of parchment paper just so that it doesn't stick. It's not necessary, but anything that makes my life easier, I will use it. Okay, so we want, this batter makes about 12 cookies. Oh, there's my oven. So you can just roll it into some nice balls, about 12 balls. And the calories on this, I think it's about 180 the last time I did it. If you guys are watching your diet. And if you have a cookie scoop, you can always use a cookie scoop. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and use my hands. It's more fun this way, using your hands, I think. Right, Jerome? Yes. I've also seen people use this with 
uh, regular peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I've actually never tried it with regular peanut butter. So if you guys have, let me know. I just always use natural. I just think it tastes better and uh, there's less salt and less sugar in the natural peanut butters. So it's just a preference for me. Okay, so let's just keep on rolling this. How's your day going, Jerome? Great. Great? Yes. Nice and autumn. It's nice and it's autumn. <laughs> you know, you are right, Jerome, because actually I've been going outside more. Um, and you know, it's just really pretty outside and the leaves are changing and you know, it's nice to just look out the window and then your mood just changes right away. Yes. My mood anyways. They act, okay, so it's actually true that weather does affect your mood. When it's gloomy out, people tend to feel more gloomy. But, and you know what, with seasons changing, your vitamin D levels drop actually. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't. So it's actually important to get some more sunlight during a time like this because, you know, during the summertime, we're exposed to so much sun. We're happier naturally. But then once our, our vitamin D levels decrease, you really, you, it's good to supplement so you don't have those mood swings or mood changes that some people go through. A little tip. <laughs> you know, sometimes, Nary's tip of the day, yeah. load up on your vitamin D. There was actually a shortage of vitamin D before. So uh, I like to stock up on it because I don't want to get my shortage. Okay, so. Two more cookies, like I said, makes about 12. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna get 13. And then you want these, just 12 on a sheet. If you want them spaced out because they will, they will spread out a little bit. Not too much though, but we did add baking powder to it. Okay, so let's put this uh, over here. Okay, now let's wash up. All right, so you want to put it in the oven for 15 minutes total. You want it baking for about eight minutes, and then after the eight minute mark, take it out and then turn it over so that the back cookies are now in the front so it's kind of baked evenly. So to save some time, I actually, made the cookies in advance. So this is what it looks like. They've spread out a little bit, but I've actually just kind of flattened it a little bit just so it looks flatter. I like this crinkly look. It just makes it look homemade, so I really like that. So this is what it looks like after it's cooled. You want it cooled for about 10 to 15 minutes. And you can eat these cookies as is, but I like to kind of make it a little bit more fancy. So we're actually going to dress it up with chocolate. I'm just using these sugar-free chocolates, chocolate chips that um, I've gotten from the store. You can find these at any, uh, any natural food aisle, like Superstore has it. Um, Walmart does not have it, but Safeway and Sobeys have it as well. So we want about one and a half ounces, I would say. So of course, me, I'm gonna use my food scale and let's measure out one and a half ounces here. I always use this. If you don't have a food scale, get one. It will help you so much. Okay, so this is one and a half ounces. And then you want to add a little bit of coconut oil just because you need something to kind of help it melt as well. So I'm gonna add about, I would say half a teaspoon. Where's my fork here? And then we're gonna microwave it for about 30 seconds or so. Let's get this in here. And it doesn't take very long to microwave, just 30, 30 to 45 seconds. And then you'll, and then actually we're going to top it off with some salt, some flaky salt. I add salt to everything, I swear, even desserts. <laughs> yes. Even my Neri's bar, I, I'm addicted to salt, but it has to be 
it has to be this coarse salt. I use kosher. Um, you don't want the fine salt because it's too salty. You want to see the salt flakes, right? So let's get our chocolates. You know, it's still a little bit, it's not quite there yet. You want it to be runny. So I think we're going to add about 10 more seconds to this. It has to be perfect. <laughs> Okay, so this is the consistency that you want. Just very light. I'm just gonna stir it up again. Let's see. Yeah, you want it to, you wanna see ribbons on your chocolate. So, just taking a look. So these cookies are still going. All right, so take the back of your fork and let's do some nice drizzles. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as you have some nice lines on your cookie. And you can give these to your friends, your family members, and say, hey, it's a sugar-free cookie. It's yummy. Right? Doesn't that look pretty? Mm -hmm. Of course, this is optional. You don't have to do it. But um, you know what? Why not? Let's enjoy the simple pleasures of life, right? Just a couple more. And it looks like it's actually uh, from a bakery. That's why I like it. Couple more. And then also you can get your kids to drizzle this. Look how pretty that is. So once you've drizzled the chocolate over it, just want the, the chocolate to harden a little bit because you don't want your hands to be all dirty, right? So it takes about, I would say another 10 minutes. Okay, and then some salt. Again, optional, but you're in Dairy's kitchen and I like my salt. <laughs> Just a sprinkle, not too much. You want to be able to see the salt flakes. And not everyone likes salt, but it just makes it taste so much better. It cuts into that sweetness. Jerome, do you like salt now? Yes, I do. <laughs> he always tell, he always tells me too much salt, and I'm like, no, Jerome, it's not. It's perfect. <laughs> Even in the background, he's like, no, no, you're too much salt. I'm like, no. <laughs> okay, and there you have it. Here are my my sugar-free peanut butter cookies. If you've enjoyed this recipe, please let me know. Like and save the video. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye now.